Hi friends, welcome again to Intellect Medigos, where learning is made easy. I am Dr. Chirag Madan, working as an intensivist at Apollo Hospital in New Delhi. So today we will discuss a very important topic that is intubation. That is a putting a tube inside the trachea of a patient. So in this video, I will discuss about when to do it. That means the indications of intubation. Then second is the drugs which are used and the third is the exact procedure and the exact technique, how to perform it. So let's begin. Now, starting with the indication, the first and foremost is during a cardiac arrest or during a CPR. Second, if the patient is in respiratory failure, it could be hypoxic or hypercapnic. Third, if the GCS, the sensorium of a patient is very low, it is less than eight, that is an indication of intubation. Then fourth, is patient at a risk of aspiration. Fifth, patient before the surgery, elective surgery or emergency surgery. Then sixth, patient having neurological diseases. Let's say patient having a extradural hemorrhage or subdural or intraparenchymal hemorrhage. I mean the bleed in the brain, which has led to decreased sensorium of the patient and patient is at a risk of aspiration. So again, then having a neuromuscular diseases like the patient having a GBS or rapidly progressive GBS or myasthenia crisis. And eighth indication is patient in which you want to secure the airway like a patient having a trauma of the face or the burns patient in which there is a chance of trachea being collapsed because of the edema. So these are the major indication of intubation. Now coming on to the equipments which are required during the intubation. So talking about the equipments which we use. First of all, this is our mannequin or a dummy on which I will demonstrate whole of the procedure. And this is our resuscitation bag. This is the mask. We need to have different sizes of mask. Now how to check whether this is appropriate or not. This is the apex of a mask and this is the base. The apex should lie at the bridge of the nose whereas the lower margin should go in the groove between the lower lip and the chin like this. If you are not able to fix that means that size is inappropriate. You need to change. You need to have a larger size or the lower size depending on the patient face, patient's anatomy. Before giving any kind of drugs to the patient you need to administer 100% oxygen via vein circuit for at least 3 minutes and this is called as pre-oxygenation. This can be done by asking a patient to take 8 deep breaths within 1 minute. This is done to have a nitrogen washout as well as to increase the oxygen reserve. Now, uh, as I already said, this is a bag. This is called as self-reinflating resuscitation bag also called by the name of ambu bag now uh, attaching it you need to hold the mask with a c and e technique although i prefer to use with my left hand but just to show you i will show with the right of my hand the thumb and the index finger should be like a c standing for a compression of the mask onto a face of a patient and these three fingers should make an E so as to elevate the jaw and then with the other hand you have to inflate you have to give the breath to the patient as you can see the lungs are inflating right so this is how you do a bag and mask procedure now whenever you are giving medication to a patient till the time patient is anesthetized and relaxed you need to give bag and mask now coming on to the other equipments this is different sizes of laryngoscope, mainly the Macintosh laryngoscope. Now I'll show you. This is the handle of a Macintosh and this is a blade. And you can see the sizes are written over here. Mac, if you can see, MAC Mac and size number four. So there are different sizes. So you can see the size number three and the other is size number two. Can you see it? So in an adult patient, in an adult male patient, we prefer to use Macintosh size number four, 
whereas adult female patient we prefer to use size number 3 but then again it depends on the anatomy of a patient now how to use it this is very important step uh, there is a groove over here in the handle and just you have to insert this blade like this and then you just have to straighten it like this and there will be a light now you need to see whether this light is adequate or not how to check it now if you are able to see the creases of your hand with this light that means this is appropriate the light is appropriate now coming on to the next thing which is a very important this is the endotracheal tube which we are going to insert inside the trachea of a patient called as endotracheal tube endo means inside and tracheal is it is going inside the trachea now uh, the parts of this of this endotracheal tube first of all starting from here this is the bevel having a murphy's eye so as to act as a adventitious port this is the cuff of the endotracheal tube then there is a mark over here this black mark should ideally cross the vocal cord while you are intubating a patient and there are various marks over here so as to see the depth and this 7.0 suggests the size of the endotracheal tube is 7 right that is the internal diameter it is written over here as id 7.0 right and starting from 18 it is till 26 cm and 28 cm right this is the called as pilot balloon from here you can inflate the cuff in a adult population we try to intubate a patient with a cuffed endotracheal tube so as to prevent any kind of aspiration right now uh and then talking about the depth how much you need to insert this endotracheal tube uh so there are various marks as we discussed 20 18 20 22 24 26 then when you are inside the trachea of a patient in a adult female we prefer to fix at the angle of the mouth around 20 to 21 cm whereas for adult male we prefer to use uh, or prefer to fix at 22 to 23 cm and then that depends again on the patient profile i mean if the length of the neck is short there is a short neck then the the depth to be inserted is on the lower side so that depends on the patient again along with these equipments you need to have a proper functioning suction machine and a suction catheter now if you suspect there can be difficulty intubating that means there is a difficult airway then you need to prepare a cart that is called as difficult airway cart in that along with these equipments we keep different sizes of oropharyngeal airway different sizes of nasopharyngeal airway lma that is laryngeal mask airway a bougie and a stilet and you can keep a different type of laryngoscope which is called as mccoy and if available you can also have a video laryngoscope and fiber optic obviously if it is available i'll cover all these topic in my next video of difficult airway so now coming back so before proceeding with the technique we need to know about the drugs which are used or which are administered before the intubation first and foremost need to give a sedation to a patient in our hospital we prefer to use fentanyl right that is a opioid you can use morphine in place of fentanyl second is anesthetic drug so commonly what we use is propofol depending on the patient profile i mean the the vitals of the patient also because propofol causes hypotension so you can select ketamine or etomidate depending on the vitals of the patient and the third are the relaxants which could be which you can use either succinylcholine or atracurium we don't prefer to use vecuronium because that is having a long acting time so now after giving all these medication one need to have an eye over the monitor also i mean you need to see the heart rate of the patient you need to see the blood pressure of the patient you need to see the saturation it's not like just you just have to intubate and you don't see the vitals so that is very very important task right so you need to either ask your nursing staff or ask your attendant or ask your colleague to just have a look on the monitor while you are performing this procedure coming on to the procedure how to perform it first of all you need to have all the universal precautions that means you need to wear the gloves and a mask and now we are working in this covid era so we need to wear a mask that is mandatory 
before performing any kind of procedure, before intubating or even bag and masking, you need to have your mask, right? First and foremost, when you are intubating a patient, the position of the patient as well as the uh, position of the rescuer who is going to intubate is very important. The patient should be as near as possible to the rescuer and the head of the patient should ideally be approximately equal to the umbilicus at this level. Although I, I don't have that bed over here, so I'll just demonstrate with this, uh, with this position, right? Now, uh, the head should be tilted like this. There should be extension at this level. Now, this extension is at the level of Atlanta occipital. Now, to align oral axis, pharyngeal axis and laryngeal axis, what we do is we place a folded bed sheet below the head or a pad below the head so as to have flexion at the level of neck. So this position having flexion at the neck and extension at Atlanta occipital is called as sniffing position or barking dog position. And then you have to hold the head over here with the heel of one hand over the forehead of the patient and you yourself has to open the mouth of the patient like this with the fingers, right? And now holding the laryngoscope in your left hand, you go inside and deviate the tongue from right to left. Now come on to the uh, inside of the mouth. Now I'm inside, as you can see, there is the tongue which I have deviated from right to left. Now I'm going inside. I'm going inside till I see the epiglottis. So you have to go gradually. I'll show you. Yeah. So this structure which you can see over here is the epiglottis. And once you see the epiglottis, you just have to give a pressure. Can you see? You just have to give a pressure and you can see the vocal cords over there. Now I'll demonstrate you on this. This is the tongue. I will go like this. I will first of all deviate the tongue and then when you see this epiglottis, so this structure, this structure, can you see? This structure is called as epiglottis and the space between the tongue and the epiglottis, this point is called as vellicula. I have to get the tip of my laryngoscope till the vellicula. So first of all, I'll go like this, deviate the tongue and I'll go over here. Now the movement of my laryngoscope should be like this as shown in this pic. So when you reach the vellicula, you don't have to twist your hand. You just have to pull it uh, at 45 degrees angle as shown in this pic. Because if you hinge it or if you use the incisor as a lever, then you can cause trauma to the teeth or even you can break the teeth. So never uh, twist your hand, just pull it at 45 degrees angle. So that you can able to see the vocal cords over there. So those that V shaped structure is the vocal cord and you can see the glottic opening. Can you see it? Anteriorly is a glottic opening. And this V-shape which you can see are the arytenoids. In between are the vocal cords. And posteriorly you can see the esophageal opening. So now I'll show you the zoom out version. How your position should be while intubating. So laryngoscope in one hand. You just open it. Go gradually inside. And I can see the epiglottis right now. I will lift it up. Yeah. So this is my hand position like this and with the other hand holding the endotracheal tube after lubricating in this manner I'll go inside and yeah I can see and I have inserted the endotracheal tube till that black mark which I discussed. Now after this we need to inflate the cuff of the endotracheal tube and attach the resuscitation bag. You should hold the endotracheal tube from the angle of the mouth, from, the, from this point, so that it doesn't slide inside. Now, yeah, so we can ventilate the patient. You can see the inflation of the lung. That means this endotracheal tube is inside the trachea of a patient. 
had it been in the esophagus then you would not have got that appropriate chest rise now after intubating what is the important step is i will auscultate i will auscultate the two apex two bases and then the uh, the epigastrium that is called as five point auscultation so two over here two at the bases and one at the epigastrium so this is called as five point auscultation so now this was all about the endotracheal intubation i hope you like this video and i hope this will help you i mean obviously the uh, scenario and the condition it depends at the patient profile and uh, the medicine and the actual patient are totally different things so you need to practice you need to do it i like to introduce my friend and colleagues dr amit and dr hamza who are the rock stars of my icu and who has helped me record this video uh, so guys if you like the content of this video kindly like and share with your friends and colleagues and uh, do not forget to subscribe this channel for the latest updates thank you so much guys for watching this video take care bye bye